Claire Tibbetts, the Cole Valrona pastry chef. I'm going to be making a ganache, which utilizes the emulsion technique, which is very specialized and very unique to our chocolate. This is a very important technique and is really the key to every base recipe that we use with chocolate. So the emulsion process, in its basic form, is taking liquid and combining it with cocoa butter so that the two fuse together. So I'm going to start with partially melted or melted chocolate and my liquid. You want to take your hot liquid and add it in several small additions to our melted chocolate. Liquid can be many things. It could be cream, milk, fruit puree, or even water. So any type of liquid that we're going to add to our cocoa butter, in this case it'll be dark chocolate, we want to make sure that this liquid is hot. If we're using something like fruit puree, we do not have to bring it to a boil. If we're using milk or cream, just to a boil or right around a boil is perfect. So I have hot cream. I'm going to pour a small amount on top of my melted chocolate. With this technique, you'll see three different stages with the chocolate in the emulsion process. The first stage will be a thick paste. Once you have a spreadable paste consistency, you can add another addition of the hot liquid. With the second addition of liquid, you want to slowly incorporate so that all the liquid, in this case the cream, doesn't splash outside of the bowl. And once the liquid is thoroughly incorporated, you can stir a bit more vigorously. At this point, you'll have kind of a spreadable paste that starts to look grainy. You can then add another addition of liquid. With this addition of liquid, you'll start to see the mixture look broken and somewhat separated. Keep in mind that each chocolate will react differently to this process. So white chocolate, which has much more cocoa butter in it, will react very differently and you will have a very thick layer of cocoa butter that sits on the surface of the chocolate. Once your ganache mixture is a little bit more viscous, you can switch to a whisk or an immersion blender. It's very important to keep the temperature around 104 degrees Fahrenheit throughout the process. Also keep in mind that there's no set quantity to add with these additions because it really depends on what you're making. If you're making a chocolate sauce, you'll have much more liquid than if you were gonna make a ganache that you wanted to cut and enrobe. As you continue adding your hot liquid, you'll see that the chocolate starts to look more and more grainy, and depending on which chocolate you're using, you'll notice more and more cocoa butter coming to the surface. Before I add any more liquid, I'm going to immersion blend first. I wanna make sure that I insert the bottom of the blade in on an angle, and then before I turn it on, I tap it a few times. This ensures that I'm actually not adding more air into the ganache. So you can see with the immersion blender how quickly it breaks, and then it begins to come back together. This is the third stage. This is the shiny elasticity. When we reach this point, we know that we have a proper emulsion. However, we may still have some hot liquid. I still need to incorporate this into my mixture. But before I incorporate it, I wanna make sure that I get to this last essential stage. If I did this process by hand with a spatula or a whisk, I would still finish with an immersion blender. We call this technique perfecting the emulsion. Once all your hot liquid is incorporated, you get a very smooth, shiny, perfectly viscous ganache. So now you have your finished ganache. You can use this to make bonbons that you can enrobe and cut into cubes. You can also let this crystallize overnight and then you can pipe this onto a dessert using a piping bag or a piping tip. You can use this base and fold in whipped cream in order to make a chocolate mousse. You can also do the same technique and instead of just using hot cream or milk, you can make a creme anglaise and use that with this technique in order to make a cream meal. So there's many, many options from this one base recipe.